Hello and welcome back to my new-ish food forest. I recorded part of this video and put it out already where I'm changing this whole area behind me um, into a sort of higher maintenance section of my perennial garden basically and I'm taking permaculture and food forest principles uh, in, in the design of it. I plan to just crack on this week and get loads done but the weather has been all over the place so I've had to just kind of take the opportunities as I've had them to get out here and get stuff done. So I've, record, I've recorded some of it, I didn't record some of it when the weather was so bad or you know I was just popping out for a short amount of time. But today it has been just absolutely glorious. Look I'm in a, I'm in a single layer, one layer of clothing. Um, I've absolutely loved today just being out here getting loads done. So what I will do is show you the video bits from this week and show you what I've got done and then I'll cut back to now and we'll just take a wander around and sum it all up and see the progress that we've made in this food forest. I'm going to get this windbreak hedgerow-ish section planted here. Quick recap, I just basically cardboard and mulched and edged this section here um, so that I can plant something that's going to provide the area behind it with some windbreak. So I've collected up some bits and bobs that I think are gonna become part of this windbreak. I'll talk about that in a second. What I also did yesterday, this elderberry was already here uh, and I have just popped in a couple of willows either side of it because I'm hopeful that one day this will be a willow arch going through here. And then I think what we might end up doing by having this bit solid and then just having the gap there is that this might be a bit of a wind tunnel, but that's okay, I will just leave that edge relatively unplanted and we'll plant in this region directly behind the windbreak. Um, I don't know if it shows on camera but this bit goes down a nice hill so if I get sort of two to three meters worth of height on this windbreak ultimately then that's going to provide a windbreak for, for quite a long way down this hill. It's raining a bit but we'll carry on. What I've collected here is not necessarily what is going to make the world's most perfect windbreak. If I was buying things new, this isn't necessarily what I would put in it. But I'm trying to use what I've already got that I think will work in this windy spot and be able to tolerate it. So what I've done here, this, these three in the bigger parts are sea buckthorn that have self-seeded themselves on my land elsewhere. Um, and I have just potted those up and I'm going to put those in here because they deal well with the coastal winds that we get. I think they'll cope really well in here. I've also got the willow cuttings that I took uh, a few days ago. We put the, some in higher up this field to create a windbreak for that new herb garden that's gone in. Um, I also did some cuttings from our hebe bushes. They tolerate the wind quite well and they put on loads of flowers all through the year. In fact, it's in flower right now and it's Feb. I think what I'm gonna do is line the willow along the back edge because that's likely to grow quicker and taller and then I'm going to put the hebes and the buckthorn this side because they're likely to stay a bit smaller a bit bushier so they provide that windbreak lower down um, so I'm going to crack on with this and get these things planted uh, and then I'll catch up with you once it's done <laughs> So that's a line of willow put in here. I've spaced these about a metre apart, which is a lot further apart than I did over by the herbs, just because I want this to get some proper height. And then of course I can fill this side of them with the other bits and bobs that I've got here. I'm not gonna put, I think I'll put the hebes on the edges where I'm gonna be walking more and I'll put the prickly things in the middle. <laughs> oh my Lord. Okay, so I did this a while ago. <laughs> they are pretty 
the duck in there. I should have separated these out in the summer last year, but I didn't get to it. Because I didn't know what I wanted to use, what I actually wanted to use these for. Holy, hmm. All right, these might not appreciate being pulled apart quite as much. Look at that. <laughs> Wow. I'm sorry, Hebes, please forgive me. At least I know they're easy to take cuttings from, so I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll take a few more from my currently healthy bush, just in case these don't make it after this harsh treatment. Well, I'm still going to plant these. We'll just see what happens. Oh, it is sunny today, but it's cold. Um, right, to finish this little wave of windbreak planting, I'm going to plant one more thing, and that is going to be one of these, which is one of these. But basically, I'm going to put that here. So, I mean, the bench and the pallet are being a temporary windbreak for that herb bed that I put in a couple of days ago. I popped that up there just to make sure, because these are little baby plants. It's not. And this, I'll show you with these trees, I'll show you the direction that the wind normally takes here. So, this See the lean on this? <laughs> so that, all the trees in, in this section are pointing that way. That is northeast, so that is that southwesterly that comes across this way, which is what I'm trying to block here, which means I need something here where I'm standing. So it's coming across there. So I think what I'm gonna do is pop one of those in here. Now this is a bit more long-term these aren't going to grow as quickly as the willow does but this will just be a great spot for one and there's some bramble roots and stuff so I'm going to glove up and dig out what I can dig a nice big hole and then pop this tree in here I know they can deal with the wind because these are the only big trees that I've got I'm going to put that one that's about a foot high in the rest are a bit smaller so I'll probably grow those on in pots for this year and then plant them out in the winter next year but that one I think could probably deal with it so I'm going to pop that in there and see how it does It's raining now, so I'm gonna give in for a bit. I'm gonna take some seed trays inside and start some seeds. But before I do, I said in the previous video that my asparagus from last year, the ones that didn't quite make it out, that died outside. It's the, the ones I didn't have space for, I said there were no signs of life yet, so I thought they probably hadn't made it. But those, these teeny tiny little spears are signs of life, so. Hey, that's cool. There's four in there that do seem to have survived. So that's a nice little beast. Four asparagus crowns that I can put straight in the ground now, uh, but not right now, because. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you're up to date-ish from that. Sorry, it was a little bit pieced together. Um, so I am now currently standing at the bottom of that hill section that all of this has been done in. So the raspberries are all the way up the top there and the strawberries that we were planting are this bed behind me here with the licorice root that's gone in next to them. Since all of that video, I've also put this bed in here 
I'll give you a closer look. So you saw me start some more asparagus from seed. These are the ones which I think may have just survived from last year. So I've popped those in, there's three of them in here, and then they're interplanted around these strawberries that are lining the edges. I'm hoping these strawberries will grow out in this space and provide a bit of ground cover so that this doesn't get too weedy. And then hopefully if my asparagus takes, I will expand this bed out further I'll expand this bed out further that way and just make it deeper and I'll, obviously I can extend it lengthwise that way and I can extend it lengthwise this way but in this end of this bed I have got these rhubarb plants that I started from seed last year that just came up that I'd forgotten about so I've popped those in here as well and we will see how this bed gets on. And over here where the other strawberries went and I interplanted the Welsh onions. This one, he's not looking too happy with me, but this one and this one look okay. Um, so <laughs> we'll see if they make a recovery. If not, again, I started more Welsh onions from seed, so I'll have plenty of those to be putting around my food forest as the season goes on. Um, I started reclaiming the base around this fig tree, which is why there's the bag of what's left of our bark and I'm filling that in here. That'd be the rest of my evening, I think, is getting rid of those weeds and making sure that it's well mulched. Here we have got what will hopefully be my willow arch through here, heading back up towards the house and the outbuildings up there. And this windbreak hedgerow that I planted with willow um, and the hebes, the sea buckthorn, I haven't put in yet. I thought I've just dug these up recently and put them in pots. So I thought maybe it would be sensible to let them get some roots before I plant them in, which is why I've just placed the pots where they're gonna go. You can see they are spring into life. There's green on them. So hopefully it won't be too long. But so I'm really looking forward to when this fills in and actually starts providing with a bit of a windbreak because then all of this space behind me can all turn into a perennial garden and I plan to plant quite a lot of things in here. I don't want to jump in too quickly while there is still no actual wind protection here and risk killing young plants. So I'm gonna really try and look after this hedgerow and then planting up this side of it will be either later in the season or next season once this wind break is a bit more established. I'm hoping that the what I have put in here already will cope okay. We'll just have to see how they go. We've had quite a lot of wind and rain since I put these herbs into this bed. We're up the top of the field now. The raspberries are across here with the willow windbreak that we've just planted here. In this section, there's a plum tree, a pear tree, and an elderberry. And then this herb bed here. This has got the rhubarb crown in it that was that I bought last year and planted here. Um, and I just didn't want to move it, so that's just going to stay here. And then around it, we've got uh, sage, a baby sage that was grown from a uh, cutting that my mum brought me, thanks mum, uh, a thyme which I've grown from seed, a marjoram from seed, oregano from seed and a rosemary from seed. So they were all started last year, I didn't want to put them out when they were tiny little baby plants. I didn't think they could withstand a winter here so I let them grow on just in the cold frames over winter and I've popped them out now so they haven't needed hardening off because they've been outside all winter they've just not been in the you know direct wind and rain but so these little nooks in this funny keyhole shaped bed I'm planning to put some pots of mint and lemon balm because I love both of those things but I have learned better than to put those straight in the ground amongst all the other things I'm trying to grow. So once the windbreak is more established, I'm starting those things from seed this year. So again, once they get more established, I'll be able to put some just slightly raised pots in here in the hopes that I can contain <laughs> contain those things. There is my week's work condensed into probably a less than 20 minute video. Um, oh, I'm pretty happy with how it's gone. Feels like I've got a bit more of a plan for this section now and hopefully we'll be getting a good amount of food out of here this year. You know, we should, should be getting some strawberries. This, the raspberries have already been in for a season, so I'm hoping they do better this year. Um, and I'm really hoping that these herbs grow on well and we can start harvesting things. So obviously with the fruit trees, we're one year closer to harvest. We'll see how they go. No expectations on fruit from my trees this year. But by creating some of these windbreaks, putting in the nitrogen fixing plants, I'm just, I'm building that 
self-sustaining perennial system in this space so yeah feeling pretty good about it and we will see how it gets on this season oh, quickly before i sign off a big addition to my food forest this year is going to be geese I'm I'm saying it now in a way that's confident because I've been hinting at it for a while but I've not been hugely confident but I'm going to help put in some clips here of a recent candling we did of the goose eggs that I've got in an incubator so you can share my excitement over that and hopefully we'll have geese running through not this section of the food press I've just showed you <laughs> but the other side past the gate at the bottom where it's mostly fruit trees uh, and raised beds and we'll see how they get along in there. So I'm hoping that they help me really keep the grass down and then that just leaves me with this section here and the annual garden that I have to actually manage the grass and in the food forest, I'm hoping that the geese will help me out on that and they won't cause too much damage to the other plants. But that's one of the big reasons why I've created this section in here so that anything I'm worried about for poultry wise I've got a space to put that I just didn't want to put perennial things into my annual garden and then kind of mix the two I'm quite enjoying having that as a separate area and this be my perennial space so this just gives me the option for having anything that I'm worried that a, a goose or a chicken might cause some destruction to Got per, I've got space for that in this section but I can still have the free ranging poultry which I do just love them having that that freedom in enough space to support them which between this field this is the rest of the food forest if you've not been here before um the chickens are currently in a pen on the far side um between this field and the field the other side of this hedgerow which is about the same size which at the moment is just pasture between this and that then there should be plenty of natural forage for some geese and the chickens once they come out of here the chickens aren't coming out of here until i'm done doing what i want to do and moving the tender things out of this section okay now i'm really done thanks guys <laughs>